Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about the CDC guidelines for transmission based precautions. What are transmission based precautions? These precautions are the second tier of basic infection control and are to be used in addition to standard precautions for patients who may be infected or colonized with certain infectious agents for which additional precautions are needed to prevent infection transmission. Contact precautions. Use contact precautions for patients with known or suspected infections that represent an increased risk for contact transmission. Everyone must clean their hands, including before entering and when leaving the room. Put on gloves before room entry. Discard gloves before room exit. Put on gown before room entry. Discard gown before room exit. Do not wear the same gown and gloves for the care of more than one person. Use dedicated or disposable equipment. Clean and disinfect reusable equipment before use on another person. Diseases requiring contact precautions include, but are not limited to MRSA, VRE, and scabies. Additional guidelines for contact precautions. Ensure appropriate patient placement in a single patient space or room if available in acute care hospitals. In long-term and other residential settings, make room placement decisions balancing risk to other patients. In ambulatory settings, place patients requiring contact precautions in an exam room or cubicle as soon as possible. Limit transport and movement of patients. Use disposable or dedicated patient care equipment such as blood pressure cuffs. If common use of equipment for multiple patients is unavoidable, clean and disinfect such equipment before use on another patient. Prioritize cleaning and disinfection of the rooms of patients on contact precautions, ensuring rooms are frequently cleaned and disinfected, focusing on frequently touched surfaces and equipment in the immediate vicinity of the patient. Droplet precautions. Use droplet precautions for patients known or suspected to be infected with pathogens transmitted by respiratory droplets that are generated by a patient who is coughing, sneezing, or talking. Everyone must clean their hands, including before entering and when leaving the room. Make sure their eyes, nose, and mouth are fully covered before room entry. Remove face protection before room exit. Diseases requiring droplet precautions include, but are not limited to, pertussis, influenza, adenovirus. Additional guidelines for droplet precautions. Source control. Put a mask on the patient. Ensure appropriate patient placement in a single room if possible. In long-term care and other residential settings, make decisions regarding patient placement on a case-by-case -case basis, considering infection risks to other patients in the room and available alternatives. In ambulatory settings, place patients who require droplet precautions in an exam room or cubicle as soon as possible and instruct patients to follow respiratory hygiene slash cough etiquette recommendations. Limit transport and movement of patients outside of the room to medically necessary purposes. If transport or movement outside of the room is necessary, instruct patient to wear a mask and follow respiratory hygiene slash cough etiquette. Airborne precautions. Use airborne precautions for patients known or suspected to be infected with pathogens transmitted by the airborne route. Everyone must clean their hands, including before entering and when leaving the room. Put on a fit-tested N95 or higher level respirator before room entry. Remove respirator after exiting the room and closing the door. Door to room must remain closed. Diseases requiring airborne precautions include, but are not limited to, measles, SARS, varicella, and mycobacterium tuberculosis. Additional guidelines for airborne precautions. Source control. Put a mask on the patient. Ensure appropriate patient placement 
in an airborne infection isolation room. In settings where airborne precautions cannot be implemented due to limited engineering resources, masking the patient and placing the patient in a private room with the door closed will reduce the likelihood of airborne transmission until the patient is either transferred to a facility with an airborne infection isolation room or returns home. Restrict susceptible healthcare pers personnel from entering the room of patients known or suspected to have measles, chickenpox, disseminated zoster, or smallpox if other immune healthcare personnel are available. Limit transport and movement of patients outside of the room to medically necessary purposes. Immunize susceptible persons as soon as possible following unprotected contact with vaccine preventable infections such as measles, varicella, or smallpox. On this slide, you will find references to the material that was used to create the content of this presentation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon.